Hey guys, today it's time to cover another concept car, this time the 2008 Dodge ZEO. I usually rotate the different types of videos I make, and it's time for another concept car video. In these types of videos, I go very in depth on one concept and cover it according to the outline that you'll see on screen. Make sure to check out my concept car playlist for more content. So let's look at the Dodge ZEO, a car that combines sporty muscle car looks, lean electric power, and useful technology. Dodge tried to go green at the Detroit Auto Show in January 2008 by releasing three environmentally friendly vehicles, the Chrysler Eco Voyager, Jeep Renegade, and the sportiest of the three, the Dodge ZEO concept. The ZEO stands for Zero Emissions Operations, a fitting name since this was an all-electric plug-in. It's technically a 2 plus 2 combination of a sport wagon and performance sedan with rear-wheel drive that could seat four passengers. It was an interesting change from the rest of the Dodge lineup. While they did stick with a muscular and sporty body, staying true to the bold characteristics of the brand, they also decided to try to get a lot of power out of non-traditional means, which we'll cover in the performance section of the video. This was essentially designed as a possible performance vehicle for the future. With the ZEO, Dodge tried to break through the stereotype that all green vehicles had to look plain, boring, and ugly. So they went off the grid with this design of a combination of a sports wagon and coupe, even though there are four doors despite its appearance. Bill Zhang, who was the head exterior designer, talked about the car, saying, quote, The 2008 Dodge ZEO concept is designed to break the paradigm of what an electric car should look like. An electric car can be as expressive as any gasoline-powered vehicle. The 2008 Dodge ZEO concept proves that point, and then some, end quote. While he's definitely right that it breaks the paradigm of traditional electric cars, it's also a strange and odd design that doesn't really look like it might belong on a car. Part of me does like it as well, so I do have mixed feelings towards it. This car does have many design elements that you'd expect from Dodge, like massive wheel arches, an elongated belt line that kicks up at the rear end, and a very aggressive low stance with 23-inch wheels. The front end gets very sporty A-pillars that curve into the roof, and they meet a reverse angle C-pillar that is found directly over the rear wheel arch. And that allows the windshield to curve and extend into the roof, which essentially gives all the four passengers a 360 degree view of the outside world, and it also showcases that elegant interior to other drivers and pedestrians that are passing by. While the ZEO looks like a coupe at a first glance, there are four doors, although I'm not quite sure how you'd open them. They are also scissor doors, which is an interesting touch that makes the low car easier to get into. For some reason, these electric cars like to have different doors. Just look at the Tesla X-Wing with its Falcon Wing doors. The front headlights are sculpted with LED lights and projectors, similar to the Chrysler 300 headlight design. And the LED taillights have an almost identical shape as well, sandwiched between the tiny back window. Up front, there's a small crosshair grille that lights up, and according to Zhang, it's, quote, designed to communicate the use of electricity as the ZEO's power source, end quote. This concept was painted in an orange metallic color that Dodge would call ZEO Orange, but it looks similar to copper, and it was accented with silver trim pieces. As for some dimensions, the length of the car is 172.8 inches, the width is 68.6, the height is 50.8, and the wheelbase is 109.9 inches. The interior is also very modern and simplistic, and reminds me exactly of the inside of the Tesla Model S. The head of interior design, Lou Gusevsky, explained some of the styling choices by saying, quote, The Dodge ZEO concept is an example of designing for people who are used to a dynamic lifestyle and who are surrounded with information and virtual friends at all times. End quote. The designers treated this cabin as if it were a single piece of sculpture. They would achieve that by having a broad sloping surface wrapped in fabric that's right in front of the driver, and that will curve into the door and quarter panel and continue along the outside all the way until it reaches the front of the passenger, so it's like one seamless lap around the cabin. There's also a narrow strip of blue lighting added to the sweeping effect. The doors and the quarter panels have a light gray portion that separates the upper and lower portion of the cabin, and there are diagonally placed milled aluminum door pull handles that look great. The center console is cleverly designed to resemble a mobile phone, although by now that's a very old looking device. It starts at the windshield that slopes down, then continues throughout the whole cabin. The controls and viewing screen are set flush with that surface for a very clean design. As for the leather seats, they are finished in super white color, as is most of the cabin, and there are contrasting copperhead stitching and seat belts. All four bucket seats have contoured bolsters, and the headrests can file into the top of the seat backs in certain positions. The seat shells are made from milled aluminum, and there are video screens that are found in the front seat backs. 
The steering wheel has two thin spokes that leave 80% of the rim open for maximum visibility. And that's because the driver sees all of the instruments on one thin blue acrylic viewing screen beneath the wheel instead of a regular looking cluster with different parts. The center of the wheel contains the driver airbag and auxiliary switches, and that is stationary while the rim will rotate around it. The screen can also be adjusted for the driver to see depending on your height. There's also paddle shifters, but they don't do anything other than operate the radio. Moving on to performance, Chrysler had dubbed this as a new interpretation of the American muscle car, and Chrysler Senior Vice President of Design, Trevor Creed, said that this is aimed at customers, quote, who want to be environmentally responsible, but they have a need for speed, end quote. So to sum up this target market, basically they were less family oriented, and while they did desire technology and power, they also wanted to be environmentally responsible. As we've said, the advanced propulsion system is electric only on the ZEO. To give it power, Dodge used a 64 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that was capable of traveling 250 miles on a single charge. And that would have overcome one of the biggest disadvantages found in nearly all electric cars at this time. However, there was no range extender, so theoretically drivers who would run out of battery would be totally stranded and forced to tow their car to get charged. Dodge had also eventually wanted to make a plug-in hybrid version instead, and use many features found in the concept for future designs and vehicles. That plug-in hybrid would have had an electric motor, paired with either a 5.7 or 6.1 Hemi. In the rear-wheel drive layout, there's also a 200 kilowatt single electric motor that has an output of between 268 to 272 horsepower, and there's regenerative braking. Dodge claims the ZEO weighed in at just 2,650 pounds thanks to its aluminum structure. That would give it approximately a 10 to 1 pound per horsepower ratio, which was slightly better than a Nissan 350Z. The goal was to have performance rival that of the Hemi, to give it that need for speed and keep the muscle car performance, and it does end up in that same ballpark for sure. The ZEO can do 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and the standing quarter mile in 11 seconds flat according to Dodge. I'm not really sure how they got that 11 second figure, or if that was a typo because it doesn't make very much sense, but that is what Dodge claimed. And the top speed was 130 miles per hour, and if you drive with a light foot, the miles per gallon equivalent would be 120 mpg. I feel like the most appropriate comparison here would be the Dodge Charger or Magnum, but we'll go with the Magnum since it's also a similar looking wagon. 2008 was the final year before the Magnum got discontinued, and it had an RT trim with a 5.7 V8 Hemi, and an SRT8 trim with a 6.1 V8 Hemi. The RT had 340 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque, and it could do 0-60 to 60 in 5.8 seconds, with a quarter mile of 14.3 seconds. Top speed there was around 143 miles per hour. The SRT8 has a bit more juice, with 425 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. So that leads to faster times of 5.1 seconds to 60 and 13.5 seconds to the quarter mile with a top speed of 170 miles per hour. As for some other specs, the wheels and tires are staggered with 23 by 8 inch front rims with 225 40 23 tires and the back has 23 by 9 inch wheels with 255 40 23 tires. The ZEO was cancelled after the 2008 auto show circuit. Chrysler had yet to market a hybrid vehicle, but Daimler Chrysler had been fined $30 million US by the federal government in 2006 for not meeting corporate fuel economy standards. So Chrysler had formed an ENVI division in September of 2007, standing for Environment and New Vehicles, and that division was solely dedicated to create legitimate production electric vehicles. They created the electric and lithium ion technology found in the ZEO, and they were planning three vehicles in their five year plan. Some type of Dodge EV sports car, like the ZEO, a Chrysler EV minivan, and the Jeep EV, similar to the three concepts that were shown off at the 2008 Detroit Auto Show. The plan for the ZEO was to outsource most of the production, but they had not chosen any partners or created a timetable for a release. When Fiat acquired Chrysler in 2009, after their bankruptcy, they would disband the ENVI division and remove the three electric vehicles from Chrysler's five-year plan, so that was pretty much the end of the ZEO. At a time when Chrysler was struggling financially, it just didn't make sense to go off the grid and try something new like this, but rather just go back to the basics instead. I truly think that Dodge might have missed an opportunity with the ZEO in several ways. First off, why an EV? Well, as gas prices were rising over time, more automakers started to turn to electric or hybrid vehicles, and now by 2020, nearly all manufacturers have some type of EV. So Dodge was relatively early in targeting those that wanted environmentally friendly vehicles and they were trying to make it work with their new responsible breed of muscle car for the 21st century. The ZEO would have fit that bill perfectly. The fully electric ZEO might have not been feasible back then, but as I mentioned there was the plan to make a plug-in hybrid version of it using the 5.7 V8 Hemi, similar to the 2009 Dodge Durango 
and Chrysler Aspen SUV hybrid versions, which paired the 5.7 with two electric motors. So that would have given it 40 miles of electric only range with some charging capability, a gas engine for driving beyond that, and also the regular Hemi power. There had been substantial demand for both the Durango and Aspen in hybrid form, so I could see the same happening for the ZEO. Another point I wanted to mention is that the Dodge Magnum wagon had been cancelled after the 2008 model year, as I said, and this car could have carried on that muscle wagon theme for the future. It also would have differentiated the car enough from the Charger, so that's another idea that could have made sense for Chrysler. Finally, Dodge said that they wanted to use some of these features going forward, but they never really did. Other auto manufacturers like Tesla would end up designing similar vehicles like the Model S, which had a similar body shape and interior, and the Model X with the different Falcon doors, and the only EV Chrysler has put out so far is a hybrid version of their Pacifica minivan. So there you have it, the Dodge ZEO was powerful, had futuristic styling, and could have paved the way for Dodge as an innovator for electric cars. But as we've just seen, it didn't quite turn out like that. So that's the end of this video guys, what did you think of this concept car? I really do think it was a lost opportunity, and I wonder what could have been. Hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and let me know if you want to see other concept car videos like this one. I'll see you in the next video.